everybody. Welcome to Off the Vine. I'm your host, Caitlin Bristow, with all of the beverages in front of me. I got coffee, water, and wine. This is, feels very standard for me. And in studio today, we have Gabby, who, of course, is freaking hilarious. Everything that comes out of her mouth, I want, I'm like, I my brain is your brain, and I, I feel you, and I see you, and I hear you. We talk about dating. We talk about being a woman in this world. We talk about her learning a new religion, and I just enjoyed this conversation with her. First of all, thanks for being here. Oh my God, thank you. I love it here. <laughs> I feel like you fit in. I feel like you need a podcast if that's not already on the way, but you you need one. I feel like you're just pure entertainment or your own TV show. So one of the two. Oh my God. Also cheers. Yes, cheers. Thank you so much for having me. I was, I'm always excited to see you. I love you. And I was literally saying we should drink rosé because I had a full, well, first of all, you see my pants are on backwards. My eyes are sausage links. I'm like. <laughs> no, you I, look great. They and, don't look swollen at all. And you're right. I'm, I'm. Angry. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling a little angry. And I, when I was in therapy the other day, she was like, well, ang- anger for you is like masking sadness. So like your anger is actually probably you being really sad and hurt by certain things. But you told me I could lean into anger. Yeah. But that's a good point. We've been taught like be a good girl since we were little and, yeah. you know, level headed. And mm-hmm. I'm not. It's unbecoming of women to be angry, I think people say. And it's like, I've I've never been comfortable being angry. I don't know. I feel like I've always, like, in my previous life, I don't know, just, like, not wanting to be angry. But it's okay for men to be angry. Right. So why can't women? Also, I think, like, whatever, whatever anytime you're sad, you should also, like, milk that. Like, like it's cathartic to cry. But not on Instagram. Milk yeah. It. Not, I mean, not I, on Instagram. I mean, I, I actually do cry on Instagram, but yeah. I've always done that because I, I always try to remind myself, like, am I doing this for attention or am I doing yeah. it for connection? Right. Because I do love when people are like, I had a bad day too. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Like, it's, I want to do it for connection, not attention. Go right. On. And you have a really close relationship with your followers. So I think it's important to like, let it all hang out when yes. you have the platform. Yes. But like, watch sad movies, like eat yes. the ice cream, like lay in bed for two weeks at a time. Yep. Like, just just let yourself like move through it knowing that it's temporary because some I had a girl on my podcast who has a child and she literally said like a child needs to move through their emotions to realize like uh, maybe they were just hungry and they were tired or they're cranky but they have to move that let out that emotion to move past it and then they're fine and yeah. she's like we're just grown babies yeah you literally. still need to <laughs> I'm still a baby I'm, <laughs> mentally I am a baby <laughs> but like moving through like actually crying who doesn't feel better after a good cry I oh. literally cried myself to sleep last night and mm-hmm. I had the best. It was so <laughs> like I want to hold you. Uh, just rock me in your arms, yeah. please. But I'm good now. Yeah, because literally. I cr- I literally was. I had the best night. I went to Dancing with the Stars. Oh my god! And uh, it was such a fun night. Oh, we went I out heard for dinner the dancers after. were really emotional. It Charities. Was- I heard. My friend texted me like sobbing. Really? Yeah. It was re- it was powerful. Yeah. She and she's a beautiful dancer. Yeah, and she is. A lot I'm of- like if I go down in history as the only bachelorette to not win Dancing <laughs> with the Stars, <laughs> you bet your ass I will own that until the day I die. <laughs> you would own it though. I yeah. feel- also I've said this before, but you can't win against 130 million followers when it's a voting show. No, you respect Charlie. <laughs> like there's they're like the votes are closer than ever. I'm like yeah right. Like <laughs> yeah do- right. <laughs> I do believe that though because Bachelor Nation is yes. passionate. Yeah, they are. Thank you. They're so <laughs> passionate. But I had such a good night and then I saw something on Instagram and then I got a bunch of bullies coming after me and then Ugh. I was just like and then I cried because I was angry but really I was sad. It was very confusing. Yeah. But I just poured myself a glass of wine and then I cried myself to sleep and I cried yesterday too. You did? Yeah. Are you okay? I'm fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Robbie and I fought about her cat. Oh, <laughs> I know. I forgot to feed her. Oh. <laughs> Would you like, give me a reminder? I, I put it in my calendar. <laughs> yeah, literally. I'm like, I'm sorry. It's not my cat. Oh, and, like, my God. The schedule was weird, but it was all, it was masking, like, a different feeling. She had been out of town for so long. We don't do well with that. So, yeah. like, I just missed her. I do that thing where I throw a tantrum when yep. I miss her. Yeah. It's like she comes home, and I'm pissed at her for yep. no reason. But it's like, because you left me. Yes. Like, it's why did you do down, that? down, and then you're, it's just a little bit of resentment that you need yeah. to get out. And, and that's then you hard. feel better. And, and then, then you, you cry better. about it. And now, you are you too it. able to get down to the root of the problem when 
it happens? Like, were you like, I actually just missed you? It, it took us like four hours. Yeah. It took me like a tearful lunch yeah. <laughs> with a friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that like I hadn't seen in so long. Immediately I started crying. I was like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. But like when you see a friendly face. Oh, I get it. It just like comes down. So you, it took four hours, a tearful <laughs> lunch. Did. Yes. We were, we're both so stubborn. I think that's something like dating other girls I don't I feel like women are a little bit more stubborn or it's just both of us but we're both incredibly stubborn like we won't give in really yeah so it was like we were fighting about nothing is it like, so interesting to not give in when it because it just could solve the problem so fast if you do literally I'm like I don't know why because it was my fault <laughs> <laughs> I mean you and almost Norm- killed her cat yeah <laughs> literally I'm like I up I dropped the ball I'm so sorry to your cat but I like just needed a reminder yeah and, like I would have gone but she was just on such a busy work trip right but, yeah it took me a really long time because it was like blown out of proportion too she was like I can't like trust your word and I'm like okay can you not like, <laughs> like now I'm a liar yeah. yeah I'm like the cat's fine she got fed yeah. so what are we fighting about yeah. <laughs> like just let me off the hook please are so stupid yeah. They're always about something else. It always. And if we could just put our ego in the back seat yeah. and just be like, I fucked up. Yes. It's I'm the same way though. Like I am so I would like to find somebody who's not stubborn. There everybody's yeah. a little stubborn. I guess it's there's probably a stubborn scale and I'm on yeah. those close to a 10 level. Yeah, same. Uh, <laughs> like off the charts like a 15. Oh my god. Like, why did I I don't know how I got like this. I don't know either, but I and I need to be right and I also talked about yeah. this in therapy the other day where I do you ever go into therapy and be like I actually don't know what we're going to talk about today and then an hour later you're like holy the- yeah, then it's like the best session. I know. That's what yeah. just happened to me where I was like, she was like, what do you want to talk about? I'm like, I don't know. I guess we could dive into like why I'm so competitive. Like <laughs> I get competitive. Like, with you like- have a list of things, <laughs> like non-topic topics. You're like, well, what about this? <laughs> yeah. Should we just like pick what? I'll like put yeah. my hand into like a jar and pulling out something. And I'm like, I'm yeah. competitive. You want to talk like, about what's it? this about, doctor? <laughs> but she literally told me, she goes, you don't have the capacity to hold yourself in a place of fear and when you feel fear or threatened, you just get competitive. Mm. And that's your strategy mm. for not sitting with the fear. You go, well, I could do this and then I could. And Ooh. why are they doing this? And and like, yeah, so you're and like sometimes trying it can to be strategize healthy. your way out of it. Yes. I will. And she goes, have you ever just felt like in that moment, like being like, I'm actually just really scared right now. And I yeah. did it the other day. I was, I'm trying. I should remember specifically what happened and it'll come to me, but I remember getting insecure about something Mm -hmm. and I was about to be like, well, I should post this on Instagram. And and then I'm like, no, you're scared right now. You're just having a little bit of insecurity and fear. Don't get competitive. Just sit with it. And I felt better after like five minutes. Yeah. It takes like, it's like the one, it's like ripping off the bandaid. Like we know we're bad at things. And then the one time you have the wherewithal to like try and make it better. You're like, holy shit, that was actually easy. And now Mm -hmm. I can pave the way for later. She said, it's actually a muscle you need to build to have that capacity. And I was like, well, holy shit. Yeah. Take me to church, Angela. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Praise <laughs> Jesus. I'm not competitive anymore. I like slide off my chair. Yeah. <laughs> you're I'm like a- having some kind of tournament next where you're like extra competitive. You're like, wait a second. Yeah, I'm like, wait, this is backfiring yeah. big time. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, relationships. I, wa- I do want to talk about relationships. I do also want yeah. to know if you guys um, are going to dress up for Halloween. <gasps> yes. Uh, <gasps> but uh, you I'm should ha- be like a terrible rug. <laughs> Oh, that's actually genius. Like people come for me for my rugs and I literally don't know why. You I do. I made rug. some I've made some bad choices. <laughs> but I do yes. need to find a way to capitalize it. Yes. But, Make uh, rugs. Holy shit. Literally start a somebody rug was company. like, yeah. You should do like a collab with a rug company. I'm like, you guys are sick and twisted. And I you just love it. See my downfall. Wait, it's like the ugly sweater trend for Christmas. You should do. <laughs> yeah. You should just start a line of ugly carpets, and they will sell out. Oh, and I they love sell this. out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I want ten percent. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I'm not gonna lie. Stress is uh, it's hit me hard lately. And I know I'm not alone in this because well, life is just stressful. But I have a little life hack for us. You can beat the stress before it beats you by adding these products into your daily routine. Pair the award-winning gut-nourishing Just Thrive Probiotic with the stress-busting, mood-uplifting power of Just Calm. Just Thrive Probiotic supports digestive, immune, and total body health, and it actually produces antioxidants right in the gut. So once it arrives in the gut, it acts like your own little personal gardener, safely eliminating bad bacteria and replenishing the good. Now, personally, I pair the probiotic Just Thrive's breakthrough formula, Just Calm, for that next-level stress management. 
Just Calm's proprietary ingredients have been clinically proven to reduce perceived stress, improve sleep quality and energy, and even encourage better focus and flow. So if you want to learn more about this groundbreaking company, you can check out my Good Gut Health episode from December 21st, where I went into depth with Tina, the co-founder. And guess what? Right now you can save 20% off this dynamic duo bundle of Just Thrive Probiotic and Just Calm when you go to justthrivehealth.com and use code VINE at checkout. While you're there, check out all their other research-based gut and immune health products. They've even got a probiotic for your little fur baby, all with the bottom of the bottle guarantee. So make this the year you take control of your health with Just Thrive. I'm excited. having my first party <gasps> in LA. I'm so Fun. excited. I love to host, oh, I get but it. I'm like nervous because it's my first one. So mm-hmm. we're doing it like on on the Halloween, which is a Tuesday. So I feel like fun. it's low stakes. That's true. Like, yeah. You, who has fun on a Tuesday? So the bar Literally. is in hell. Yes. Yeah. 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 I want to keep it really low. Yeah. So like everybody, it's like, you know, exceeding expectations. Yeah. But um. Like, Robbie was talking about things she wanted to be without me. So and I was like, like okay, um, that's fine. Like, initially, like, are we breaking back. up? <laughs> yeah, literally. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I love to, like, dress up for Halloween and, and, like, make costumes and stuff. Yeah. So she was out of town. So I have an idea for me and my dog. I can't say. <gasps> okay, well, yeah. Because you, you don't want people to steal it. <laughs> so I was like, Robbie, Obsessed. you could be, Obsessed. like, Vince Vaughn in, like, the robe. You could be, like, the meatloaf. You could be that, whoever you want to be. <laughs> yeah. She wanted to be Justin Justin. And Haley Bieber. I'm oh. like, it's only fun for her though. It's like low key. I tr- I'm I'm Haley Bieber every day in my own world. That's true. <laughs> okay, if you were Justin and Haley, you should be Justin. I would have to be Justin, and then she could be Haley. Yeah, yes. yeah. But like that would never fly. And I'm like, <laughs> everybody's gonna be Justin and Haley Bieber. Like it's just that's like everybody's gonna be like something from the Barbie movie. Everyone's yeah. gonna be Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Oh my God, yeah. It's there's the ones that I always want to think outside the box for Halloween costumes. Like I've told this story so many times on the podcast. <laughs> So no, I, like oh. I know all of your costumes, but like one time <laughs> I was I dressed up like a cowgirl and I had like a deck of cards around my belt and then I had fake hands grabbing my boobs and I was Texas Hold'em. Oh my god, I love it! I just I love, love a like, good like pun. Funny. Yes, it's so good. Like a one night stand. Yes, or like night stands. I'm like, oh, that's so good. So it's so good. One time I just tied a bag of chips to me and I was all that with a bag and a bag of chips. <laughs> You're like, that's right. And I did a bunch of hair flips. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. I love oh, and Halloween. one time I was I dressed up as a rooster but I had like a goalie blocker thing on and I was a cock block. Okay, genius. And I would just go up to people at the bars like if they were like hooking up, I'd be like, no! <laughs> right in the middle. Yeah, I don't get I any action. You don't either. <laughs> I'm sad that like Instagram stories and like TikToks didn't exist when I was in my like prime funny days oh because I did some funny stuff that would have really went viral for me. Yeah. But I'd be canceled now and I wouldn't have a career, so. Totally. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword. Well, that'd Social be fun media. to host a Halloween party. I'm so excited. Are the you going to make it all low. spooky? I don't know. Maybe like some cobwebs, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, now that we're thinking about it. <laughs> like, shit, I never thought about this. Yeah, Maybe I'm a cobweb. Like, oh, God. <laughs> Maybe I'll like on. a ghost somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Boo, spooky. <laughs> spooky. <laughs> oh, my God. I would go. See, this is where I feel pressure with hosting. Like, I would need, I would hire like bartenders and I would hire like spooky yeah. bartenders. And then I would have like a catering service. And then I would make no. sure the house was decorated. But I, Literally. that's a lot of work. It's so much work and it's last minute. It's my first one. And so, it's a Tuesday. Right. Depending on how this one goes, I hope it becomes like a thing mm-hmm. and then I can get better at it. I love that. So we'll see. But this- I'm going to make like a spooky punch. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows what to do Everybody's just like drugged at the end of the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like roulette. <laughs> yeah. I told you it was scary. <laughs> you fell for it. It's your fault. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I need to switch gears and then I was oh like, God, please. Yeah. But I was going to, but then I was like, we're laughing so hard, and then I was gonna be like, so let's talk about religion. <laughs> Like, I need to, I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah. what's interesting though. Okay. So I interviewed Julie Chen Moonvez, who I'm like a super fan of because I'm obsessed with Big Brother. And she really actually shifted a big thing in my brain of what prayer means to me. Mm. And so I was always kind of like, I don't know about God. Like, I don't know if I'm the I'm yeah. see a Jesus. Like, I don't know. And but I always believed in like a higher power. And totally. like, I love. I think religion is really beautiful and all the different ones. And I just think like my religion to me was like I believe in a higher power. Yeah. I don't know what, what that means, but mm-hmm. I started really leaning into prayer lately. Oh, cool! And like, like every night or and like- morning. <laughs> You're like every second. Please, please, I'm please, like, please, 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 God, for the love of God, please, please let yeah. this podcast do well. Yeah, literally. I'll just, I'll just super like selfish. One million views. 
<laughs> I, I could really use a solid here. I'm yeah. going through a tough time. But I literally, <laughs> morning and night. Yeah. But I use it as gratitude and it's a prayer. And I'm like, it doesn't mean I need to be like, dear Holy Spirit, you know, but like yeah. religion is so beautiful. And I love that you're leaning into Judaism and like yeah. learning about it. I think that's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. I know I, was, I have like a couple things just right off the top of my head thinking or talking about religion. We just watched the Centenarian documentary on Netflix. Okay. So people who live like a hundred or close to it, this guy goes to blue zones. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Whatever. Cool. <laughs> okay. No judgment. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> but one was like, obviously, it's a lot to do with food and where you like get your nutrition. So it's like a lot of cultures kind of surrounded by water with like really rich foods, mm-hmm. like sweet potatoes. And they're all like pretty remote. But one actually in California, Loma Linda, was a blue zone. Okay. And it was like just this community of people who really like leaned into their faith as a adults and like they were just connected and very mm-hmm. community living and and I think a lot of people say their faith helps them live longer yeah. and I think just it's a way to feel connected to something yes so with whoever you're praying to morning and night it's like a good reminder that you're like kind of being like thank you to whoever and just feeling connected to the things outside of you mm-hmm. as I get older I become more spiritual I yes. think because when you like you're like holy shit this is actually a miracle <laughs> that I'm here right. and I'm living this life <laughs> right. and having it up and like you know overcame whatever you overcame in your past like I think even like going on hikes I feel like really connected to nature now whereas before living in Colorado I was like I'm not gonna like walk right for fun (laughs) yeah like sounds terrible yeah I'd rather like watch housewives (laughs) it is interesting though the older you get the more you find like purpose in a life too where you're like yeah you realize how fast everything goes and you're like yes. it's nice to believe that there could be something after two or like right. you know something like you said feeling connected to something outside of you because I know we get so caught up in like Instagram and like right. work and what we're doing but it's all such an illusion and it's like all about like what's actually what is real yeah no literally I have like with Instagram it's like so hard obviously to yeah. have like a good relationship with it but I'm like it literally is just like a portal on my phone like something that doesn't exist in real life it's not tangible right for me it doesn't like whether I have it or not it's not really affecting my day-to-day my relationships mm-hmm. what I do like I'm still going to go to the grocery store with or without it like, right so it just like is literally like like a button and then it, it like it opens up this whole new world yeah but it's not really now like, that is spooky yeah <laughs> like yeah it's scary how the one button does open up your right. whole and and especially having a platform like right because you want to invite people in because you like the connection yeah. but you also want to keep them at a distance because it can get scary and right you have to have like a healthy relationship with it but back to Robbie in Judaism yes she so she grew up Hasidic which is like very like cultish mm-hmm. and um I think so yeah religion has always been like a big part of her mm-hmm. and what I like about it is like the tradition it's yes a, it's a way she prays every night and I'm like shoot one up for me baby <laughs> <laughs> I tell them I'm here <laughs> <laughs> so she kind of like takes the grunt work. I'm like falling asleep and she's like saying her prayer in like Hebrew. And You're I'm like, like did you let him know about me? <laughs> <laughs> and she does. She's like, I got you. Oh, that's so cute though. <laughs> yeah. But I, so I love that part of her and it's like, it makes her feel protected. Like she yeah. has mezuzahs on all her doors, which I think is just like little reminders that there is something. And I think Judaism is actually, it's just did like I a- say it wrong? I said Judaism. I think it's either. I don't okay. really know. No. Okay, that's scary. Okay. <laughs> yeah, please. Okay. Anybody listening? Yeah. yeah. But I feel like it's a very like insightful religion. I don't know. It just really makes sense. I think the way they do things, there's like how they determine if um, something is kosher or not mm-hmm. really depends on how well you treat the animal, how like I think like what the animal feeds off of. Like there's there's really thought into everything. Mm-hmm. Like shellfish is like their bottom feeders, so we don't eat them because oh, they're, really? <laughs> they're too low. They're not good enough for us. <laughs> and I'm like, I can like you know fuck with that. I can fuck with kosher. I, yeah, yeah, but I like love shrimp. <laughs> but it's like I like the you idea li- of it. You love the bottom feeders. <laughs> yeah, okay. I am a bottom feeder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a crustacean. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I- I love it. Your brain works the same 
my mind does. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like keep like one thing to the next. And it's like you just let it come out, which is my favorite because a lot of people will be like, keep that inside. But we're yeah. like, nah. No, just say it. It's more fun. Did you see The Little Mermaid? I didn't. Oh my God. Ooh. Okay. You need to because The Little Crab is everything. Oh my God. You sounded love. like him. Oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, we've been doing Shabbat on Fridays and it's just like, it's an, it's an excuse to like have a community. Totally. It's like she has a lot of Jewish friends. Yeah naturally just from like having Shabbat and, yeah. it, and it's immediate connector. Yeah. She's like, I'm Jewish. Oh, you're Jewish. And they have something to talk about. They could be strangers. So it bonds you right away. And then you just have an excuse to get with people on a Friday yeah. and like there's tradition involved, but really it's just about like being with other people. And I bet that's stronger than ever right now, like coming yeah. together. And that's so important. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And it's like a way like, to get me out of the house. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not leaving. <laughs> yeah. But like, this is like a little bit, there's more, I don't know, I guess like a push to do it because it means something. Yeah, I like that. And yeah. I like a little bit, like w- when somebody has structure to their life, like, yeah. you know, a, a, a constant, like I love, uh, I love anything that's consistent in a person. Mm-hmm. And so religion to somebody like, and, and getting yourself involved, it just shows respect, first of all, yeah. for the relationship, but also something for you two to like really grow together with because you get to learn and it's yeah. there's so much to learn about a religion. Oh my gosh, I love learning from her. Yeah. She's so smart. Yeah. She's obviously just like in it. She's been Jewish her whole life. Right. And Jewish people really believe in it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I guess like everybody really believes in their religion. Well, I don't know. I question mine all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. actually don't know. I'm like, <laughs> I've just never been strong in a religion. So it's really, it's just really honestly cool to see. And it's really fun. We like loosely, I always like talk about maybe converting, which yeah. like I'm kind of down with. It's yeah. hard. It's like time consuming and kind of hard, but I'd be down. Yeah, I could see you doing that. I feel like yeah. you're a committer. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> yeah. man. You do commit. Are you two living together? No, not yet. Oh, but okay. it seems like it. Pretty which, much. Which is actually like like good for us, I think, okay. right now. Yeah. Because we already spend so much time together and we both have really busy lives that it's nice to have like the the separation. A but how bit. do you? Are you like, okay, hey, you sleep at your place tonight? Like once or twice a week. So oh, wow. not that not that much because uh, honestly our no animals, that's more than what I thought yeah yeah that's more than I'd like <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah. like constantly trying to lure her in I'm like look I made you a space in my drawer and like I'm organizing the bathroom products All of a sudden, there's like a toothbrush for her yeah and, like yeah that's, oh yeah but that's cute yeah no I love it do you do you both talk about like what the future holds are you like very day to day are you like in the moment like what do you do you talk about what's next yeah of course we're very committed to each other yeah so we're like. Like in it for the long haul. Yeah. We, our six month is coming up. Cute. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, cute. I know. <gasps> and so you're we, already fighting about the cat. Yeah. Oh, that's real. Yeah. It's real. It feels really real because yeah. like lesbians move really fast. Yes. And we just we've spent a lot of time together. We're both really open emotionally with each totally. other. Like we want to work why hard. It's beautiful, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like we're real we we're really committed to each other. I feel more committed to her than I have to anyone else. I love that. That's like when you know how something's instantaneous like when you meet somebody and you go oh I think like I even can feel that in friendship sometimes like you're like oh yeah. I know this person's gonna be in my life for a long time did mm-hmm. you feel that with her it was yes I felt something yeah I didn't know what it was right because like it was my my first you know time dating another girl yeah. I I was dealing with so much other stuff like honestly a lot of shame yeah which of course. yeah I think is like natural and because I've been like gaslit by our culture that yeah. like homosexuality is still terrible yeah. So I'm like, is there something wrong with me? Right. Is it is it a product of something that went on like in my childhood? Mm-hmm. Like kind of still associating it with something bad. Right. I was in therapy, basically just took it day by day. Yeah. And then something flipped with time. And it's like just the best relationship I've ever been in. And I think that's where it's cool where you like – you're like, wait, this feels so safe. And yeah. this feels so right. And then you mm-hmm. get to fully like – share your authentic self and be like, wait, I've, I've been made to feel a certain way for so long, but, like, this is who I truly am. Yeah, it's a lot of, like, trusting it. You know, it's, like, I know, it's, like, listening to your gut or your mind, like, which one takes over. Yeah. And I think, I think you have to kind of wait till they can, like, converge, but it takes a while, but it's, like, always, since the day we met, I never wanted to be without her. Wow. So, I was, like, I got... I'm not even gonna cry. (laughs) That's so 
sweet. I just had to listen to that. It's like no matter what's going on or my doubts about, honestly, myself and my ego yeah. and like what was going on with me, like as long our time together was she makes me laugh like nobody else has. Mm-hmm. She makes me feel so special. We're just like a real team. Yeah. And I think like that's the part you have to trust and it will come with time. And I think now finally everything's aligning. I don't have any questions. Yeah. But we're still new. So we're still actively figuring out things about each other. Yeah, of course. So like we're both kind of at the place. I, I take things much slower than her. Okay. But I think it's a good balance. That is a good balance. I mean, six months, you really start to know somebody at six months, I yeah. feel like. Because you've gone through. Do you believe in honeymoon phases? Um, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I why wanna, do you say, do you? Well, because I like, I'm such a psycho about like, well, it's gonna, love's gonna die after mm. six months. Like, I'm such mm-hmm. a, but that's uh, my own shit. <laughs> but kind I, of. But I, I love I the idea that, of a though. honeymoon, like, just like turning it. This is how I need to think of love. Like, yeah. Yeah, of course, it's like a honeymoon phase and you're on your best behavior and everything's so great. But then the next step is like real authentic love where it's like, yeah. Th- it's like a, a level up. I think of it as a level down, but I need to think of it as a level up. Yeah. Yeah. I think also, like, I still feel like I'm in the honeymoon phase. I feel like we just hit our honeymoon phase, actually, at, like, six months. I don't know, because now, That's like, a, you... That gives me hope. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think before, not that I'm distrusting, but it's, like, obviously I yeah. had things in yeah. my childhood that mm-hmm. it's, like, I couldn't necessarily, like, trust the people around me. Yeah. So you really have to just learn by experience and being with this person. So yep. now I feel like the last maybe month or so, I trust her intentions. Wow. It's like, even when we fight, I know she doesn't want to hurt me. Yeah. And I know it's coming from somewhere else. So instead of focusing on the fight, we're giving each other grace. That's really cool. And I think it's just like brought us so much closer. Like I think about her constantly. I always want her in my bed. Yeah. Like it's like, I really you, feel the you, love now. Yes. I don't know. I just feel like I, I wonder what that feels like. And then I wonder if I put too much pressure on what that's supposed to feel like and then I get so confused and then I'm like bitch you're 38 figure it out kind of I don't know I think it's all experiencing with the right person I feel like love changes with each person that you're with and yeah I think at the beginning with Robbie I was like it almost felt too safe, mm. you know? So I'm like, I don't know if I'm getting, mm-hmm. like, the endorphin rush that I should be. I don't know if this is it for me mm-hmm. as much as you say it is for you. But it's just because of, like, the safety. And now I can really lean in. I love and that. I think, like, just the emotional connection. I feel like I haven't been as emotionally connected in my previous relationships as I have with her. Mm-hmm. Whether that's gender, maturity, right. the person, yep. age. Yeah. Um, it's but it's like it it takes two. You yeah. know, as much as I want this good relationship and to be bonded emotionally, so does she. Yeah. I don't and she understands herself. I yes. think my problem like with dating before is like the guys I was dating didn't understand themselves. Yes. It's like so we would talk about things but they couldn't actually articulate like they could maybe say what they thought they were feeling, but they that didn't know where exactly. it was coming from. So it's like, what I feel like I'm going to bang my head against the wall. Yeah. It always feels like I feel like I'm constantly trying to understand myself, and I will do like any healing journey I can think yeah. of to get there. Mm-hmm. And I constantly want to just like be so in tune with who I am as a human, right. why I am the way I am. Right. And I want to be able to articulate it to people, and especially in yeah. relationships. It's almost not even about the words, it's like, the connection. Yeah. Like, do you feel heard? And it's not always just about what you're saying, but yes. like your body language, like how you want to get to know me. Yes. So I feel like that. Yeah, I've you, only you feel just seen now. Yeah. and heard and you yeah. want to see and hear her. Right. And we don't like, we're not perfect. Like we speak very different languages, yeah. her and I. Well, we speak, it's like both being women mm-hmm. definitely helps because there's a layer yeah. that you don't have to explain to somebody else. Yeah. But as far as like, she is very extroverted. She grew up with nine siblings. She's oh, holy always shit. like, yeah, she's like fighting for attention. Yeah. She has no fear. Yeah. Like she had a great, like she had a grandpa and a great uncle who were like the shit oh. and like always gassed her up. Yeah. Like her head's <laughs> so big because of these two guys. I love it. And I'm like, honestly, like such a good thing for you to have. Yeah. But like, I'm kind of the opposite. Right. My childhood was much different. Right. So the way we go about things is really different. Mm-hmm. But I think she also, like both of us don't really have an ego about something. It's like, this That's is nice. what I need. And it's going to be like, okay, thanks for letting me know. I'm going to try and figure out how to do it. Right. Like it's not, it's really just not personal. Yeah. It's like just breaking down the walls so you can like 
act like accurately communicate your needs. Wow. So you guys are just getting started. We're just getting uh- started. <laughs> That's it, because six months ago you were here and we were. I was like Vinny, like yeah. and I was like no, <laughs> literally. I know. I'm like thank God, yeah, like no. love him, but I don't think so. <laughs> it's so funny just how much things can change, and that's what like yeah. I always try and explain to people on the podcast, and then sometimes I have to like practice what I preach because I get so stuck in a pity party or in like a rabbit hole of like, well, where is this going, or what am I going to do now? And poor yeah. me. And then I'm like, no, this yeah. is all part of life, and something I could turn the corner and something could happen and right. my life could change. Totally. Off the Vine is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now, first of all, you know what I'm going to say and you know what you're probably doing. You're multitasking. While you're listening to me talk, you're probably driving, eating, cleaning, exercising, maybe grocery shopping. But if you're not in some kind of moving vehicle, there's something else you can be doing right now, which is getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's super easy. You can save money by doing it from your own phone. And drivers who save by switching to Progressive save nearly $750 on average and Auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. So discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner, and more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year, so you are protected no matter what. Multitask right now. Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, national average 12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. Step into a world of nonstop action on DraftKings Casino. Play the classics like Blackjack, my personal favorite, Roulette, and Slots, plus enjoy exclusive games that you can't find anywhere else. Right now, new customers can get a deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit only $5 or more. All you have to do is sign up, select the offer, Make your deposit and start playing from a full suite of games. Your way is the only way to play on DraftKings Casino. Play online on your time, in your space, and within your means. It's safe, secure, and reliable, so you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you're ready. Download the DraftKings Casino app now. Sign up with promo code VINE and new customers, you're going to get a deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you've deposited $5 or more. Only on DraftKings Casino with promo code VINE. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Please play responsibly in partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races in West Virginia. All games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Must be 21 years or over. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. One per opted in new customer. Minimum $5 deposit. Max match $100 in casino credits, which require one-time playthrough within seven days. So see terms at casino.draftkings.com slash players choice. Restrictions apply. I think being single is hard. Like I know yeah. people like kind of want to glorify it, like step into your power, like this and that, blah, 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 attract, don't chase. And it's like- But I'm a relationship girly. Yeah. And no matter what you say, being single is hard. It's hard. Like I'm so glad I'm not single. Like, I I'll crave say like compatibility. Yes. And yeah. like, I think that's what I miss the most from my last relationship is I'm like, oh, I miss having like a- a friend. <laughs> right. Yes. You know? Yeah. Because you're just not constantly thinking about yourself the whole day. Yeah. You, like, get to focus on somebody else. Yeah. And I think that's okay. Like, wanting a relationship is totally fine and normal and a part of the human experience. It is part of the human experience. We all want it. Yeah, we, we literally do. all crave it and want it. I like alone time for sure. And I, yeah. like, I'm trying to, like, really lean into, like, I'm single. But yeah. I want to find someone. Right. Yeah. And that's, like, you know... I think I'm at a place where I'm like, okay, I really know what I want. <laughs> like, right, totally. And I think that'll help too. I mean, ultimately just like experience. Yeah, like yeah. Robbie and I have both had very, like, and you know, you've had such like a dating life before. It's like you just weed out and you find what you want and what's important. I'm curious how you feel about like sharing a relationship because like I'm- polyamory? S- <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nerr, nerr. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like, like the next person I date, I don't want to share 
my relationship. I want it to be completely for me. I want, I feel like Instagram really ruined my last two relationships. I really do believe uh, it. Yeah. Um, and so I'm scared. So I want to know your thoughts on yeah. what made you be like, I'm going to share this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, because Bachelor Nation and, and people who follow, like obviously get very invested in our love lives. And that's why they follow us too, because right. that's, they've watched you go from like finding love to find, to being in love. Yeah. And they, it's, they're rooting for you. Right. So I'm like, I don't know. In the next relationship I get in, I'm scared to share it. Yeah, I hear that. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's hard not to, obviously, because of our platform. I think part of us, like, I mean, I would just want to be proud of it and I want to be able to share my day to day. Yeah. And it's, well, now it's, and it's who you are and that would feel like you were hiding something and that's obviously not who you are. You are a prideful person who wants to share who who you are as a person and that's why people love you. And that's what I get scared of too, because I'm like, I want Mm -hmm. to share and be proud, but I also am like terrified. Yeah. I feel like you, cause you were a different era than me mm-hmm. too. Yeah. And I feel like the people who follow you and like y- your kind of like people who are loyal to you are different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. And like, I, it's like a little more vocal. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just going back to having a healthy relationship with social media. It's like, it's unnatural because yeah. now all of a sudden you're connected. You have like 2 million followers or something. Yeah. That's like, when would you ever be in the room with 2 million people? Right. Never. Yeah. And if you were, they wouldn't have one bad thing to say about you. Right. I think like with the life that we chose comes the criticism, unfortunately. Yeah. But I'm like, haters gonna hate. Yeah, like, I'm like, haters means I made it. I agree with you. I actually don't. I don't don't mind the hate yeah it's more of I'll, I get hate really bad all the time and sometimes I'm mm-hmm. like bring it on and yeah. other times I'm like Why? um yeah but I think about putting a relationship I feel like that's like inviting people to have noise in the relationship mm-hmm. but I feel like and again different audiences yeah I feel like you two and I might be wrong get a lot of support yeah do you I agree yeah that's amazing Mm -hmm. like and I shouldn't let it bother me regardless like if people are hating or supporting but for some reason I'm so jaded now with relationships no I know but it's like you obviously like don't deserve it and it's like why would you subject your next relationship to it you know yeah so I think also I try I it's a balance of like when I engage and what what information I release on social media yeah I think like a longer form like a podcast or, or like an interview somewhere where you really get to talk about it and I so I try and keep it pretty minimal and not like totally answer questions it's like you don't know the ins and outs of my relationship mm-hmm. and this is not the place to talk about it right so I'm just gonna like innately protect myself that's true like take it for what it is it's a fun yeah. platform share yeah. the fun and you two look like you have so much fun together yeah we do yeah. and that's so important too god I want mm-hmm. somebody to make me laugh Oh, it's the best. I'm I'm that's yeah. I'm craving someone who makes me laugh. It's like night and day. I knew I always wanted it, but I didn't know like that it would make this big of a difference and she is like the funniest person I've ever met and the funniest person a lot of other people have ever met yes. like which is saying a lot because she's a comedian and yes. all her friends are comedians. Yeah. So I do feel like I got lucky, but like we both just don't take things so seriously. We're like quick to stop a fight with a joke and just always like sometimes she will get mad, which I've had this with other partners too. It's like if I'm being like too silly for her and she's like in like <laughs> yeah. a sexy mood. Yeah. Kind of, and you're like, Rawr. yeah, she'll yeah. like get mad. Yeah. I'm like, no, bitch. Like <laughs> you don't, you're not the only one who like gets to goof around. Yeah. And that comes with time. But now it's like we'll be goofy together. Yeah. Which I love. I love that. I yeah. feel like goofy together is goals. Oh, do yeah. Do people say that anymore? Goals. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. I really do. I thought like Wells was telling yeah. me about a term called the Riz or just oh, Riz. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, I'm like, Bobby I'm, I'm officially Riz. at the point in my life where I'm like, okay, I'm not <laughs> the young spring chicken anymore. Like, I, yeah. I'm – Pushing 40. <laughs> no, it's hard to keep up. Also, like, I went, I I was single for a lot of my 20s and, mm-hmm. and like, well, bachelor, bachelor, like, some of my 30s. So I don't want to be, like, single so f***ing hard, yeah. Caitlin. <laughs> 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 like, I don't want it to come off like that. Like, you will. I Ultimately, with every breakup, you're setting yourself up for the right person. Yeah. And I know it's really hard to see, but, like, I know that innately for you. Yeah. Like, you're just going to find it. I, I believe I will. And yeah. it's more, people are like, you went on The Bachelor, like, to find love, and that's what marriage, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't 
care. I yeah. I might get married one day. I might not. I might have kids. I might not. Yeah. But did you talk openly about not wanting kids? Yeah. Do you get backlash for that? Um, maybe. I, I don't want know. your following. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they seem so like accepting yeah <laughs> i have like a very good solid accepting like i love them and i feel yeah. like they're the listeners of the podcast yeah but so many people like i go back and forth on wanting kids so bad i'm 38 i have mm-hmm. my eggs frozen but yeah. at the same time i'm like i don't know if i want to bring kids into the world and i right. know everyone can have their opinions on that but also like i crave being a mom i feel like i was put on this planet to be uh-huh. a mom yeah but it terrifies me to have kids so what what made you sure in your decision i honestly don't know yeah. i just i never thought about having kids no, oh so it's always yeah. been, okay not like even as a little girl i never not i mean I, yeah i'd say my maternal instinct is pretty lacking <laughs> <laughs> i'll say it but even in like what are you like I, as a dog mom yeah love him but he has no discipline he's terrible <laughs> like i can't do like that i'm just getting into training he's six it's too <laughs> late <laughs> it's like more fun for me yeah 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 but yeah no it's not i'm really good with kids yeah i think you you too yeah. probably just like yeah, yeah. being so goofy yeah. and can get on their level i was always taking care of myself as a kid like so I never got to be a kid right now I feel like I'm just now starting to live and like yeah to be like I don't like take care of myself Mm -hmm. like financially emotionally yeah and I'm 32 so it's like why I can't like jump in because I'm missing that whole phase of my life where like I get to be a kid yeah and I feel like now I get to and I want to and this is how I want to live my life and I honestly just never thought about it Hmm. it was so I'm like maybe that's a sign but that's okay like I feel I hate when people get shamed for decisions yeah I didn't even make it it's just like, <laughs> like it's not. <laughs> You're like it was never a decision. It's no. just this is what it is, right? Yeah. And I think if I was like, if I ended up marrying a man who I I remember, I would literally pray and be like, I I know I'll find the right guy if, or I'll know like a God exists if I end up with a guy who doesn't want kids because mm-hmm. I felt like it could never be my decision. Yeah, which shows kind of I think the internalized misogyny. Like totally. we're just here, we're a vessel, we're yep. here to procreate. Yep. This world is so overpopulated it's like having kids now like so what so they have to be in private school like they have social media like all these things that are working against you all the technology like it's just not as easy as it was it really is and there's no right way to do it not saying you can't do it but it's like you have to really want it that's the thing too is in a relationship I've talked with people about wanting kids or like what that would look like Mm -hmm. you have to be in such a solid place with like all my friends have kids and they're like Mm -hmm. you need to be in the most solid place in life with your relationship to then because no matter what it's going to be hard and I feel like I've never been in that place where I'm like I could do this with somebody like Mm -hmm. there's always something in the back of my mind where I was like "Mm, I I couldn't do it I couldn't we'd have very different parenting styles and that's another thing yeah it's so hard and yeah I mean of course like divorced parents or things Mm -hmm. that I saw it's like I'm like, I don't know. I Like, do you want that added stress? Right. Yeah. I, and I'm like, I love being an aunt, and I love being a godmother, and mm-hmm. I love kids so much, and I'm. it doesn't mean I hate kids because I might not have right. them. Right, yeah. It's just such a deep topic that yeah. people get very invested in and very passionate about. Right. And I just wondered if you felt any backlash from people or if all of your followers are just so great. <laughs> They haven't said much. I will say this is maybe the first time I've talked about it at length. Okay. And I was kind of like, it's like now that I'm in like a lesbian relationship, there's Mm -hmm. not as much pressure because you immediately take it off the table. It's like, what does that tell you too? Yeah. Yeah. Now, because like, like anatomy and biology doesn't add up, then I'm like, then it's just like kind of a cop out. It's not a discussion. Mm -hmm. So then- I don't know. I was thinking about this other, the other day. Yeah, people, I don't know, kind of come for, like, whatever, being in a relationship with the same sex. Mm-hmm. And, like, just that. It's, like, a sin, yeah. you know, leaning on religion. Yeah. It's not supported by your doctrine. I understand that. Why isn't it supported? Because we're meant to, like, procreate. Right. So then, like, but then, yeah, being in a heterosexual relationship, some people just don't want to have kids, but they don't get the same hate as being in the same sex of a relationship. Right. 
So it's like it really just like flips the script without yeah. really needing to because ultimately I think you just have to – it's like we're all people. We want what we want. We're not. I'm not hurting anybody <laughs> by not having kids. That's what like, my therapist always says to me. Yeah. You, if I'm feeling shame or guilt for something, she goes, did you hurt anybody? Is anybody yeah. hurt? And yeah. I'm like – well, physically or right, like, right, because they seem really hurt. Right right I'm like, <laughs> but like, I'm like, no, I didn't. Nobody got hurt. Like, people yeah. act like these decisions. They're just Are so personal. yes, yeah. It's like it's just so interesting. Yeah, I think at the end of this podcast, I think <laughs> the takeaway for me is that I, I am a lesbian. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> <laughs> heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, I'm like, does Robbie have any friends? It's the better way. It's yeah. fun. <laughs> That's Chriselle was talking to me about it the other day too, because I just I admire Chriselle and G Flip so much. That I yeah. see the way that they treat each other yeah. behind the scenes, uh-huh. and it is f-ing beautiful. Like I just, I admire their relationship, and I feel like you two are probably uh, the same way. There's some yeah. like, there's something special and magic about it. I think there just because women are better and special, and then we get to treat each other nicer, and it always feels like you're kind of doing something bad. Yeah. That's the part. It's like <laughs> it's a, little like a little taboo. Naughty. Yes, uh, so it just makes it more fun. <laughs> That's what. Is, what does Robbie think about how like Bachelor Nation is? Was she a Bachelor fan? Yes, yeah, she was. Oh, she amazing. loves Bachelor Nation. Oh, that's she's awesome. like I won the Bachelor. Ah! Like, you did, babe. <laughs> <laughs> like we're here. That's awesome. I love yeah. it. So obviously she goes does like comedy stuff all yeah. the time. What is next? for Gabby. <gasps> oh my God. I wish I was begging, begging, begging. There's something really exciting coming. I you can't, can't say it? I know. I can't like talk about the details, but it's really soon. Okay. I can't wait to be able to share it. Okay. I know. So please, I'm asking you guys to hold on for dear life. I'm but on the edge I'm of my seat. so excited. But it's it's so close. It's like teetering. It's like Okay, just, well, I'm excited. Yeah. Hopefully by, the, I don't know, maybe in the next couple weeks. Okay, exciting. Yeah. I love when people are just so who they are and authentic and I feel like that person always wins and I mean win in like the best way possible where I'm like you can only try and be somebody for so long without like emotionally drowning and like getting lost in that mm-hmm. when you just own who you are and you just like whatever you do it's going to be successful oh my god thank you yeah that means a lot coming from you I, I really believe it like there are thank certain you. people where I'm like you because you are so authentic to who you are and you're just living your full truth whatever you do will work I thank you it means a lot and I hope so because it is scary I mean choosing this kind of life and like sharing everything about yourself yeah so there's a lot of like vulnerability that comes with it but it's like I think what I've learned from being on The Bachelor you know I I think I was one of the first like of its kind to like not come from a traditional home and I got so much support so it's like no matter what there are people who are wanting that voice yeah oh absolutely you are voice for a lot of different women out there which is really cool like a lot <laughs> and you know that's obviously not showcased a lot on tv it's yeah it's usually like the girl next door the who right. are, you know and the close family and the this and that's yeah. very much what i mean that's why we're all brainwashed <laughs> yeah yeah you know literally so you get yeah. to come in there and live your truth and have other people feel seen too which is yeah I just gave you two thumbs up. I am <laughs> two thumbs up to you. Oh, hey. Yeah, I'm so good on you. Oh yeah. my god. Would you and Robbie ever do a biz collab? Oh, uh, like a business? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. We like everyone's like throwing us ideas, and we're like, okay, you guys, we just have to make sure like our relationship is like the baby first. But I think naturally, we're both like very career minded. Yeah. So I think in the future, like it wouldn't be a no. Yeah. Yeah. I could. I could just see yeah. it. That's why I say it. Okay. I'm gonna play one game with you before I let you go. Okay, please. It's called co- it's called Grabby. <laughs> Grabby. Grabby. No. <laughs> Grabby. What do we call it? Grabby. Grabby. That's Gabby me. and Robbie. Yeah. Do you guys oh. have a couple names? No, but well, I do love Grabby. Oh, Grabby. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Grabby is actually so cute. It's like old lady yeah, with my dick. But it's uh, I picture like Grabby. Like, like yeah, yeah, Grabby. <laughs> that's so cute. And we add an IE to everything. That's another fun thing about being with the girl <laughs> is everything becomes like so cutesy. We're like, give me kissy. What about a huggy? <laughs> like, oh, you want Denny? Like, <laughs> it's like so annoying, but actually so so fun and I'm cute. I'm obsessed. I saw you two <laughs> being interviewed by Bethany Frankel, which, oh, how yeah. cool is that? So cool. Love and her. you guys, I was just like, I'm obsessed. Like, I could yeah. be a fly on your wall at all times. Yeah, no, it's so sick. <laughs> but it's, like, so fun. Like, I want that. No, I want to be so cute and annoying with somebody. It's the best. Yeah. It's... We're, like, so cuddly. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. What am I doing with my life? Get yourself a girl. I might. Okay. Most likely to grabby. Grabby. <laughs> Who's most likely to, Robbie or Gabby? Okay. 
eat something off the floor. Me. <laughs> She's such a germaphobe. I'm like, really? Chill out. Oh yeah. my gosh. I bite my nails after a plane ride. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> that just That's got a new weird. level. <laughs> yeah. I never, I don't really get sick very often. So, yeah, there you go. I have a good immune system. <clears throat> Kill a spider in the house. Me. She's such a baby. Really? Yeah. I'm like, I told her this the other day. I'm like, being in a relationship with another girl is like being a boyfriend and a girlfriend at the same time. I can see that. And I pick up a lot of the boyfriend duties. <laughs> I know, which I'm like leaning in, but it's not easy. <laughs> what about be late for an event? Oh, God, me. She's never late. She's so punctual. Let a toot out in an elevator. <laughs> we That's one thing that we don't Haven't really. Haven't done it? No, not really. We're both like very, like, well, no, she's really anti. I think because being in a relationship with the same sex, it's easy to blur the lines. Yes. So we have to be extra careful because, like, in my past, like, dating a boy, like, they'd always fart, so then I'd fart. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, if you're funny, me fart. <laughs> like, I think farts are just funny. So do I. But with her, it's like, no. Oh, okay. So, Keep but gotta her, something. she's, <laughs> but I would say her okay. she knows why ah! <laughs> yes uh, this is this is i'm gonna have robbie on the podcast next for a confession <laughs> yeah. but, okay who's more likely to forget the other's birthday me because i did i just emailed her an event last night i was like should we go to this and she's like oh sure we can just celebrate my birthday the next day ah! i'm like oh my god so sorry we have a trip planned i'm like oh it's just my brain it's useless yeah, yeah screen door on a submarine that's what i call my brain sometimes <laughs> <Yeah>. useless <laughs> what's the point okay who's more likely to get a random tattoo me she has no tattoos oh i'm getting one tonight oh my god fun I don't of what i don't know oh my god good you have any you. ideas yeah I'll think I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally going to an event where there's a tattoo artist and i will not leave a party with a tattoo artist until i get with that oh my god fun would you ever do the inner lip no because uh, one of my girlfriends did and it comes off right away oh annoying yeah she had hoodlum <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> um okay who's more likely to um bring home a new pet me <laughs> She's so responsible. <laughs> you have no it. idea. I love it. Okay, what about forget deodorant? Probably me, honestly. I I'm I always forgot. yeah, I'm always asking her for deodorant. I am She's very put together. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mhm. Except for when she's not, but <laughs> <laughs> She's uh she's always put together except for when she's not. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I had something better there, but I just repeated what you said. No, but it is. It's like one. It's like a one eighty for her. That's so funny. It's, do you have a confession? Yes, I <gasps> thought of one actually, which is like kind of similar to last time. Not mine, but we were talking about dirty water. Yeah. So, and it always has to do with my dog because that's my whole life. Yeah. But he was like, I don't know, a little barfy. Yeah. The last couple days, yeah. and like, which isn't abnormal for golden doodles yeah but it went on for longer than like mm. i would have liked yeah. and expected and then he was having diarrhea and like acting Ooh. weird so i was like what is going on and like i clean out his water bowl with like hot water yeah but i don't really put in the dishwasher and i don't do it that often yeah i switched his water bowl and he was totally fine really so i think i made him sick yeah but he like literally licks his own asshole i watch yeah. him every day <laughs> like, what's wrong with a little dirty water well, i know i'm like i rinse I'm it out that's yeah. so i I actually, my mom told me, she was like, how often are you wa washing the dog bowls? Because apparently that's a thing like built yeah. up bacteria mm -hmm. in the water. And I'm like, okay, good to know. On that same note, Pino had diarrhea all night the other night. Oh, no. I w so Were Pino, you up all night? bless Pino. He is the sweetest dog I've ever met in my life. Like he is so sweet. Ramen will bark in my face and be like, <laughs> bitch, get me outside. Now I got to go. And yeah. Pino will be like... Oh, I'm like, Aww. I don't want to wake her up. And oh he'll just God. start doing laps. And so I woke up and I was like, why is Pino staring at me? He's oh. always like out through the night. So yeah. I let him out and and he immediately <gasps> ran. And it was like, <laughs> ah. yeah. yeah. And I was like, That's oh, bless. You know. Every three hours he <gasps> needed to go. And I'm like uh. sitting there just cutting diarrhea, wet diarrhea out of his fur at like three in the morning. Oh, being my like, God. oh my God, he's poor baby. <laughs> no. But like, I don't ever want him to feel shame. So yeah. I'm like, Good job, Pino. Like, no, good so boy. Oh, honey, I'm just cutting like fucking stinky yeah. diarrhea on my hands. But then like, did you bite your fingernails? And then I bit my fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> You're 
be like, yes. And you know what? Never felt better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? Liked it. Well, I can't wait to find out what you're doing. Yay, me either. Oh, God, dear. I asked everybody. I'm like, can I finally talk about it? Because even six months ago when you were here, you were talking about something. I know. That's how Exciting. long it's been in the okay, works. Well, it's literally going to put me in my grave. <laughs> but I will survive. You're like, but I will day. be there with a paycheck because this is going to be good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll be rising from the dead. Like, told you, bitch. <laughs> yeah. You know that TikTok when people are like, when when people at the restaurant start gossiping, you're like, you yeah. <laughs> like rise from the dead. That'll be you. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I can't wait. Thank you so much. Tell everybody where Thank they you. will find the news when it comes out. Please on my Instagram, which is at Gabby I have a TikTok, Gabby Wendy. Low key, think it slept on. <laughs> um, but that's, that's news it. on her. On her. Well, I was gonna say Snapchat. I'm old. I'm out of here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I freaking adore you. You're amazing. Yay. I'm Caitlin Bristow. I'll see you next Tuesday. You're next.